Well, welcome everybody. It's great to be uh, here again today and uh, it's an exciting time that we're living in. Uh, Greg and Joanne say good day, and, um, and it's, uh, we're really looking forward to them coming back and being part of the church. Uh, it's an exciting time that we're living in and I believe that really, and I've said this so many times now over the last few weeks, that we really, really, really need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying because there's so many sounds out there, so many voices, so many opinions. You know what I say about opinions? They're like armpits. Everybody's got them and most of them stink. But anyhow, the thing is that if we're led by opinion, well, then we're going to, going to have trouble. We've got to be led by the Spirit. We've got to let the Spirit of God uh, talk to us and reveal stuff to us. Because you see, God is always moving. God is not slumbering or sleeping. He's always on the move. He's always uh, seeking to, to, to fulfill the dream and the purpose and the plan of the church to, to be able to touch your life, my life, and, uh, and activate the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us. So I want to speak this morning about there's no limits. There's no limits to what God can do. Every time God moves in the New Testament, uh, His purpose was to bring about a new covenant, a new whole new way of living, whole new thing. He always had trouble. He found trouble. Man had trouble understanding what God was doing uh, because of the old covenant or because of the old traditions. Did, uh, those things did not allow them to receive what God was doing in the hour that they were living in. In Isaiah 42, uh, verse 9, it says this. It says, Behold, the former things have come to pass. A new thing I declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. So God wants to speak to us by His Spirit. He wants to reveal what He's doing. He just doesn't want to catch us by surprise. And that's why it's very, very important to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is doing. When the Spirit of God moves, He usually does something totally contrary, if I can say this, to the natural mind. He wants to do something in the Spirit. It says here also in Isaiah 43, and it says this in verse 18, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old, because I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, Shall you not know it? Or else, will, will, you, will you know what, what I'm doing? Will, will you be able to move with me or will you resist me? Will you, will you allow me to take you where I want you to take you? And you see, when God moves, it's always something there that is impossible to the natural mind. Because he goes on and says, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals, the ostriches, and everything else. And, all, and he goes on, and he starts speaking about things there that, that seem contrary to the natural mind. So when God moves, he's going to do something that's supernatural, super powerful, and that will bring something to pass which he is going to bring forth. We used to say a long, long time ago these words, and I want to just say them again. Uh, the new is in the old concealed, and the old is in the new revealed. When God says he's going to do a new thing, it's not just going to be something there that is going to be contrary. It's going to be something there that's already been shown to us in the old, and in the new it's going to be revealed. So, Father, I come to you today in and through the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for the spirit of a living God to just fall afresh on us, take the wax out of our ears, Lord, soften our hardened hearts even, give us eyes to be able to see what you're doing right now in the hour that we're living in. We are living in a very, very strange time. As we look what's happening in America with the riots and everything that's gone on, as we look at the, the virus that's gone worldwide in, in, in a matter of sh a very short period of time, as we see the unsettledness, the, the people today that are, 
that are without jobs and financial problems and, the, and as many of the retirees that have lost their hope because their future is gone as, the, as their nest egg has, has just been swallowed up. Oh my God, I pray today that, that Lord, we would not be uh, just relying on those things, but Father, we would lift our eyes above what we can see in the natural into the realm of the Spirit and we can see your hand being outstretched over the nations of the world. Your purpose, your plan is to bring a people to the knowledge of God, to bring people into, a, into that relationship with you. And Father, I'm praying today that, that as we as a church, we would not uh, just let our hands hang down, but Lord, we would let our hands be raised to you in glory. We would raise our voices in praise and worship and adoration to you, my God. And Lord, because today our eyes are upon you, and for that, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And if you believe that, can I hear an amen? I'm speaking today about no limits. There's no limits around your life. Man-made rules. That they, you know, some of the rules today is that you can only uh, travel at 100 kilometers an hour along this beautiful highway. You know that you can go a lot faster. You know that that car that you're driving has the ability to do up to 200 k's an hour. But for safety's sake, we drive at 100. I'm not saying please break the law, but what I'm saying is that laws are good and rules are good when they, when they protect us. But if they bind us, if they hinder us, if they stop us from going, where God wants us to go, if they stop us from doing what God wants us to do, well, then they're a hindrance and they've got to be stopped. I'm not saying we should break the law, but what I'm saying is there is more in you than you could ever imagine. Like that car, there's more in that car. It's not being used up. When you're in trouble, you're in the ambulances and the fire brigades and everything, they go faster because they can do it. But friend, I want to say today that there's more in you than you could ever imagine and there's more in you than you are using right now. There is absolutely no limit to what you can do. There is no limit to what you can do but what limit you impose upon yourself. You impose upon yourself limits saying, I can't because... I will not be able to do that because of this, because of that. The Word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not, I'm not limited by my ability. I'm not limited by my lack. I'm not limited by that because God is a supreme being and God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever imagine or think. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Traditions are not all bad, but some man-induced traditions will hinder us from our potential. God has given every one of us the potential to overcome, to triumph, to be victorious, to rule and reign in life. If we're not living like that, if we're not feeling that, well, it's obviously that we've got to start to stir ourselves. We start to, 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 to somehow or other lift our thinking above that. I know a man whose hands have been severely affected by arthritis. Yet he stuns people by making the finest jewelry you could ever see. Rob didn't allow the arthritis to limit him. He knew his potential. He knew that he could do it if he, if he just persevered and he broke through. And he makes beautiful things today. You see, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you can't do it, most probably you'll never ever do it. You might think God could not use you. You might have thoughts about yourself. You might say, God, yes, you can use that person because they're, but you can't use me. I think that there's an old song that we used to sing. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life. You see, it's not what you've got, it's what God can put inside you. 
It's not what the world has fashioned you into. It's what God wants to make you. He said to the disciples one day, they were fishermen. And he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And you see, one of the great secrets in life and one of the great revelations is that I know that God wants to make something out of my life. He just doesn't want me to be a loser and broken and distraught and, and, and just getting through life and, and just waiting for the rapture. He wants to make something out of my life that I can be a carrier of the mantle, carrier of the anointing, carrier of the victory, that, I, that my life might be a signpost to people, that they can follow and that they can go further and deeper and higher into the things of God. Traditions and laws are produced to protect us. Some good, some not so good. Don't want you to get too far out there. You might get hurt. <laughs> and that's not bad. But we really need to be led by the Spirit. Not, not by friends with their opinions, with their even their, their good concerns, people that really care for you. Oh, don't, don't, don't really, don't, 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 you know, you might get hurt. You might, you might get disappointed. You, come on. God's word is God's word is true and we can believe it. We've got to be led by the spirit and not by man. Because everybody really wants to help you. <laughs> Everybody wants to, but friend, we've got to allow the Spirit of God to help us. We've got to be led by the Spirit, not by man. In John 16, 13, it says, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you of things to come. That is the good thing that God doesn't want to have secrets. He wants to tell us of where He wants us to go and what He wants us to do. Uh, in 1 John 4, 17, listen to this, this will blow your mind. Because as He, Jesus is, so are you in this world. Can you believe that? Can you get your mind around that? You might think, oh man, I'm this, I'm failure, I'm a negativity. I, I, I'll never ever make it. I'll, I'll never be able to do anything. But the Word of God says, because as He is, not as He was, as He is, victorious, conqueror, overcomer, triumphant, ruler, reigner, healer, deliverer, whatever you want to put in there. Because as He is, so are you in this world, not when the rapture takes you up, not when you get to heaven, in this world, God wants you to be more than a conqueror. He, Jesus, nothing ever conquered Jesus. He willingly gave himself to the cross. He willingly gave himself. He could have called down 12,000 legions of angels. He could have done this. He could have done that. But he didn't do that. He yielded. He gave his body for ransom for you and me that we would also, as he was, as he is, in this world so are we amen we can be victorious man that we need to meditate on that word we need to put that one on your fridge you need to put that one on your on your mirror in your bathroom you need to put that somewhere perhaps it would be better if you put it into your heart and let it come out of your mouth because as he is so are you in this world oh man I want to say it again, doctrine is good, but man-made, devil-inspired doctrine that tries to limit me will destroy me. I don't know about you, but I want all that the Scripture says is available to me. I'm not trying to look for some new thing or new... I just want everything that the Bible says I can have. And to do that, I've got to become a student of the Word. I've got, I've got to have my ears open to the Spirit of God. I've got to let the Spirit of God come to me. You see, if you want everything that the Word of God says, you will need the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to reveal that to you, not Neil. 
not Neil, or not somebody that's going to sit beside you and tell you you can't do it. You need the Holy Spirit to activate something in you. I believe that God is calling us to go deeper than, and, than we've ever gone before. See, to do that, you've got to sometimes push aside some things. You've got to listen to the Spirit of God further than we've ever, ever gone before. What God wants will challenge us. What He wants to do will challenge us. The first thoughts that we will have is that's impossible. How is God ever going to create rivers in the desert and highways through the wilderness? How is He going to get the jackals and the ostriches and that to worship Him? How, they're, 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 they seem so obscure to the natural mind. But you see, when God speaks, He will challenge us. I want to just go to a, uh, some scriptures here that we know only too well. And it's found in the book of Romans. And uh, we could almost quote these words one by one. And, uh, but I want to read it to you because I think it's very, very important that we have a look at these things again. And uh, it's found in, in the uh, book of uh, Romans chapter 4. Story of a, of a man by the name of Abraham and a woman by the name of Sarah. It says, as it is written. Friend, I, this, I cannot stress this more than enough. It's not as it is the opinion of man. As it was Abraham's uh, uh, desire or something like that. No, as it was written. Whatever is written in this book is yea and amen. We, we can take it. We can receive it. We can somehow or other. But it will challenge you. Yes, it will. When he says, I want, to, I want to make something beautiful out of your life. When you know deep down on the inside, all you've got is brokenness. All you've got is failure and defeat and, and, and all the rubbish and the junk that's been poured out on your life. All the, all the junk that you carry. I used to sing that song, pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and, and get rid of it, amen. Pack it all up and, and throw it away. Get rid of it. Don't carry it through your Christian life. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. As it is written, I have made you more than a conqueror. As it is written, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are well able to do exceedingly abundantly. God wants to come into your life. He wants to empower you. He says you have received power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And if you've received the Holy Ghost, you've got power. You might say, well, I don't feel it. I don't care. Start to demonstrate it. Some Start to use it. Just like Rob, he had to demonstrate. He had to push through some obstacles, and he, but he accomplished, and he now makes this beautiful jewelry. God wants to make something beautiful out of your life. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God, he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, already dense, dead since he was about a hundred years old, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So these scriptures are so fantastic. And we're hearing about a miracle that is about to take place, about these two old people. Oh man, I can imagine it. I can only imagine. I'm not a hundred yet, but man, I, sometimes I feel it. But, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's a negative. But anyhow, the thing is this, is that, that here are these two people there, and they, they had to break through some stuff. Somehow or other, they had to believe. Friend, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. You could be right at the lowest ebb. You could be at the bottom of the pile. You could be there feeling so miserable and so I don't know what. And I believe that there was times here with Abraham and Sarah when they would have felt exactly about like that. 
but something happened. They strengthened themselves. They, they did something on the inside, just like David. When, when he came back from Ziglag, he had to strengthen himself in the Lord because they wanted to kill him and they wanted to do this and they wanted to do that. And he had to strengthen himself in God. And he rose up above it. And like these people here, they rose up above it and they came to a place where they did not consider their own bodies or the deadness of their bodies. But they considered the Word of God. They considered Him faithful, who had made a promise, said, you're going to be the father of many nations. You know, for many years, over 20 years, Abraham and Sarah did waver and stagger at the promises of God. We're here, the end result. Praise God for the end result. But you've got to understand, too, that they had to push their way through something. They had to break their way through something here. They had to break the negativity and, the, and, and the, the awesomeness of the promise. Over 20 years, Abraham and Sarah did waver and stagger at the promise of God. First thing is, when they heard it, they laughed. They laughed. <laughs> Sniggered, it said. <laughs> How silly is that? Man, I've... I've I am now barren. I, I, I've been through my time when I could have had a child. Now I'm past the stage. Now we get this word. They laughed. After they started to think, well, perhaps something could happen, uh, they tried to help God out by sending in Hagar. They tried to help God out. You see, in reality, what was going on, they were limiting God, trying to please God trying to do something. In Psalm uh, 78, verse 41, it says, They limited the Holy One of Israel. Man might say you're too old or you're, you're no good or you haven't had enough education or whatever it is, but God doesn't say that. You know, my mother-in-law, Nancy's mum, she was quite old at this particular time and she was living in, in Townsville and... Uh, she was down the backyard there, and I said to her, what are you doing? She said, I'm planting a mango tree. I said, you what? She said, I'm planting a mango tree, and I, and I want to make mango chutney out of it with them. And I thought, don't you know it's going to take nine years to get a mango? Nine, you're, you won't last that long, perhaps, you know what I mean? And, and at that particular time, I thought Jesus was coming back next year anyhow. So I thought, how stupid is that? That was my opinion. But you know, that mango tree grew. And there was a time there when it had the biggest bone special mangoes I've ever seen in my life. There was only about a dozen of them hanging off this little scrawny looking tree. And, and uh, there was a cyclone that hit Townsville. And Grandma looked out the back and here were these mangoes flying around in the, on this tree on their stalks and the wind was blowing them and she went down to that tree in the cyclone and this is a true story I'm not telling you fibs she walked down to that tree and it wasn't that thick she got a hand around the trunk of that tree and she looked up to God and she said God I love you I'm yours I pay my tithes and I'm believing for these mangoes <laughs> you know she made mango chutney and it was nice. You see, I thought she was stupid. I, I don't doubt some of you think I'm stupid from time to time too. But I'm believing for a revival. I'm believing for a move of God's spirit. I, I'm believing that God's going to do more than I could ever think. God has so much more for the church to discover. So much more. I, I, let's have a quick look too at 1 Corinthians. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, these are all real scriptures. And uh, it's in verse 2. And I, brethren, when I come to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony or the mystery of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Friend, we can't 
just keep listening to the wisdom of man. Our faith has got to be in demonstration and power. The testimony, the mystery, human wisdom makes sense, but it can block, bind us or hinder. You know, you might tell a friend, you, you, you've been praying and, and God speaks to you. And, and there's something there, there's something that God wants to do in your life, but, but there might be a hindrance in your life. And, and, and God wants to break that hindrance. But other people can't see what God's doing in your life. They have to assess what God's doing in your life through their life. And that's where man's opinions come from. You might tell your friend, I felt God told me to give an offering of $10,000. Oh, friend might say to you, don't do that. You really can't afford it. But you see, that giving might be the breakthrough that takes you into something that blows your mind. I, I'm, I'm just speaking hypothetically. You might be a missionary. You might, you might say to your friend, I, I believe that God's called me to become a missionary in Africa. And your friend would say to you, Oh, Dr. Livingston, don't do that. <laughs> you might get hurt. It's too dangerous. <laughs> See, if we listen to people, we never ever hear the story that could be written about you. And we all know the story of Dr. Livingston, of course. You see, we're called to be carriers of the presence of God. Another word for the presence of God is the anointing, the mantle, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, whatever you think. This am a, a ma amazing outpouring of the Spirit will infiltrate every area of your life that is yielded to the Spirit of God. It will get into and touch you and, and help you and make you and mold you. In 2 Kings 13, 21, there was a dead man that was thrown into Elisha's grave. He came back to life. Power of God, the anointing was so strong on him. I'm not reading all these scriptures because I, I, for time's sake. In Peter and Acts 5, 15, the power, the anointing, the presence was so strong that they say his shadow touched them, and they were healed. They laid people in the street because there was something that was on them, the power of God that was on them. You see, that's what God wants to do with you. Peter is the one who won, at one stage denied Jesus. He is the one that says, I'm going fishing, and led a bunch of people back that way. You see, God wants to change us, but as the power of God came on to him, it infiltrated every area of his life. And this man that was full of fear now was full of faith. And the faith got inside of him so much that, that he was a carrier of a mantle. You see, God, all he had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But God made something beautiful out of his life. Shadow touched them, they were healed. We know it wasn't the shadow only, but it, it was what Peter was carrying the touch people. It's what he was carrying. What are you carrying today? Are you still carrying the brokenness and strife? Or are you allowing the Spirit of God to come in and heal you and deliver you and set you free? Another scripture here I want to read to you in John chapter 7. And uh, again, these are all scriptures that we know so well, but because they're, they're, they're the foundations of what we believe, they're the foundations of, uh, of what God is doing in our life. Um, it says for, in verse 37, it says, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. See, see, I believe that what, this is what God, there's got to become a thirsting in my soul. I, I, I've got to start to thirst for the things of God. There's something in me. I, I'm, my mouth's starting to dry out now as I say those words. There's got to come a thirsting and there's got to come a hunger. 
And, 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 and that's, they're the people that God is looking for. Not just the ones sitting around saying, well, praise the Lord. It's going to be okay. Everything's all right. Glory, glory. No, 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 no. It's, if you've got something stirring where you've allowed the Spirit of God to infiltrate and get on the inside of you and, and start to stir and mess with you and, and, and show you things that will blow your mind and, 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 on, and, and you battle with that unbelief to start with, but now all of a sudden you start to stir and you start to get excited and you, and you start to believe God. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Spirit has said, out of his heart or out of his innermost being, not this pumpity pump, but out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. This he spake concerning the Spirit. Concerning the Spirit. The Spirit of God wants to drink, wants to come as you drink, as you drink, 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 drink. Out of his innermost being. Our rivers will flow, living waters. This spake here of the Spirit. We've got to learn ways to release that which was within you. You've got to learn how to, how to do things. Go and pray for the cat. <laughs> Lay hands on something. Do something, amen. You never, never know. There's many ways of, of releasing the anointing, but, but start to do something. Start to believe and, and release something that's in your life. The anointing, laying on of hands, anointed hands, seeing a lot of empty hands laid on empty heads and not much happening. But I want to tell you, you get anointed. You, you, you get anointed in the, and the power of God that's in you. And then all of a sudden, uh, as you use these ways to release the anointing out of your innermost being, the anointing will flow and people will be touched and people will be delivered. Anointed hands. Many are healed by just getting into the presence of a living God. Oil, the oil of faith, prayer cloths. I was in a meeting in Brisbane, a good friend of mine, Alan Wills' church, a few years back, had an evangelist there, a healing evangelist. And people were bringing handkerchiefs and aprons and all different manner of cloths and things like that. And the, and the altar was, the whole platform was full of them. And, and as the man was preaching and as he was walking around, he, it looked a little bit bad but he was even walking on these things as he as he preached because he had nowhere to go and so he just kept walking around and walking on these things and and and, and uh, my natural mind think oh he shouldn't be doing that but see that's the trouble is that, that we're all riddled with this stuff on how it should be done and how it shouldn't be done and all I know is that a few months later about four or five months later the there was a testimony came in the church and this lady stood up and she said, I want to testify. And uh, Ellen brought her out and she said, when I went home, she said, I, I, I had my prayer cloth because my mother has got a condition in her feet that had her bedridden. She couldn't get out of bed. But my mum, because of the way she thought, she said she's a hard lady and, and she won't receive it and she won't do this and she won't do that. And, and she said, and I, fear came inside me. And so I put my prayer cloth up on a mantle in my house and she said I left it there for three months and she said after a period of time she said I woke up one morning and she said I really felt the Spirit of God said go and give that cloth to your mother and she said so I plucked up my courage and and I went out there and I took it to my mum I said mum you may not understand this and you may not believe this and she went through all the the maybes and she said but we had a healing evangelist and he prayed over this cloth and I'm believing that if you put, uh, go, when you go to bed tonight, if you put this, wrap, this around your feet, that God will heal you. And the, and the mother said, oh, okay, I'll do that. The next morning, she said, her mother rang her up. And she said, hi, mom, how you going? She said, great. She said, can you come around and pick me up? She said, what do you mean, pick you up? She said, my feet are 100% healed. She said, I'm going shopping. <laughs> Just like every good woman would do. <laughs> See, for three months, that thing was sitting on the mantle, just pulsating away there. The anointing. There's, there's things there that blow your mind, and, and you've got to break through some things. 
When one of the great ministers of the, of the gospel that, that saw thousands of pounds, thousands of people healed and delivered, uh, and, and he was on his deathbed, and, and this young evangelist guy was there talking to him, and he said, Sir, he said, You've seen so many great things. You've done many, many, many great things. He said, if you were to live your life again, what, what would you do differently? Is there anything you'd do differently? He said, yes, there is. He said, what would you do? He said, I would take more risks. I would take greater risks. In other words, he's saying, I wouldn't limit God. I wouldn't listen to man. I wouldn't allow man to control my life. You see... This word is truth. It is alive. It is powerful. It contains everything that you ever need. Everything that you need for life and for godliness. Everything that you need to overcome. Whatever it is you need, it's in this book. God will speak to you through this book. He will reveal himself to you through this book. It's an amazing book. I want to ask you today, your life. Where, where, where are you at? What, what's going on inside you? Are, you? are you allowing negativity, failure, and defeat? You see, the Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But then it goes on and says, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. You see, today, you may not have, have any imagine about what God wants to do in your life. I had no idea at 27 years of age, when I walked out the front to give my life to Jesus Christ, I had no idea. I had not seen, ear had not heard, neither had it entered into my heart, the things that God had prepared for me. I had no idea. But God began to reveal them to me. I thank God that he just didn't show me everything. Little by little, line upon line, he started to open up. And as I walked through one door, there was another that was opening. As I stepped through that, there was another. As I moved on, there was another. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But really, it goes a little bit deeper than that. All I had to offer him really was my obedience, to follow him, to put my trust in him. Abraham and Sarah, they considered not their own body. They believed God, and it was accounted to them for righteousness. They believed the word of God. Friend, it's not what man says. It's not what tradition says. Some traditions will bind you. But there are real traditions, and they're good traditions, and they're wonderful traditions. But unfortunately, they've got so mixed up and entangled, we don't sometimes know one from the other. Some people get so tied up and so caught up. And as I said, I was, so, I was upset that night watching that man walking on those prayer cloths. And, uh, you know, just <laughs> stupid, isn't it? But then I thank God that I was back there later on and heard the testimony. Heard the testimony of that woman that was totally healed, totally delivered, totally set free. So today, you know, God has got a plan for your life. He's got a, he's got a roadmap for your life. And, you know, where he says that I'm going to put a highway in the desert. My life was a desert. It was a desert, man. It was a desert. But God, now there's flowers and there's beauty and there's, there's fulfillment. You know, today, Jesus is very, very real. Don't limit God. Don't limit what God can do with your life. Don't limit God with what he can do with your words. Those words can carry the mantle, can carry the presence of God, can, can carry the power of God that will infiltrate a person's heart. I believe that there's a few keys. Number one key, I believe, is if you're thirsty. Get thirsty for Jesus. Start to seek the Lord while he may be found. Go after God. When all this pandemic and all whatever they call it is finished, make sure you get yourself into a good Bible-believing church. Get yourself into a church where they'll encourage you and inspire you and, 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 and help raise you up to be the champion that you really are. The champion that you are.
Let me say that again. The champion that you are. You may not feel like a champion, but you are a champion. And so today, just surrender. Let the King of glory come in. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory? He's a Lord strong and mighty in power. The one who's never, ever lost a fight in his life. I ask you today just to surrender and get hungry for God. If you've never, ever met this Jesus, come to Jesus. If you've never, ever met him, friend, whatever people have told you about him, whatever things you've been told. When I, when I was just a little kid, I was told by, by somebody, hey, you, you've committed three immortal sins and there's no way in, that you'll ever make it to heaven. I thought, oh man, that's the end for me then. <laughs> I didn't even know I'd done them. But I'd already done them. I must have already did them that day. But praise God. <laughs> that was a way, that was man's opinion. But there, when I was 27 years of age, I walked up to the altar and I asked Jesus to help me. I said, will you help me? Will you help me? Will you help me? And I didn't hear him say, yes, I will. But I believe that's what he said. And he came into my life. And he started to lead me, started to guide me, showed me himself, revealed himself to me. The so, Father, today, touch these people. Touch them, my God. If people don't know you, draw them by your Spirit. Mighty Holy Spirit, go out there and touch people today. Let them see the reality of a risen Christ. Let them sense your love today. And Lord, I pray that, that Lord, that they would surrender to you. And for that, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Well, friends, it's been good today. I've enjoyed myself. And, and uh, while I was preparing this message, I was deeply challenged. I was deeply challenged to even go deeper and further. People might say, your pastor used by date. Well, you tell that to, um, to uh, Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> you tell that to those guys. You tell that to Moses. You tell that to Abraham. Now, we're never past our used by date. Not while we breathe. While, while I've got breath in my life, I want to be everything I can for Jesus. And uh, just pray you to be the same. Thank you for uh, praying for uh, Greg and Joanne. We really want them to come back as soon as possible. Keep praying for them that God will make a way. Keep, keep believing for us as a church. Uh, and just keep believing that soon we'll be able to come together and, and worship together and, in, in, uh, in our little church there at uh, Kiwana Waters. God bless you today. Have an amazing day. Amen and amen.